Pak acaranya saya mulai ya. Oke. Okay. For everyone to to who has entered the room we're about to begin. So please have a seat and make yourself your make yourself comfortable. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen to the honorable Dr. Dayang Hasliza Muh Yusuf as a senior lecturer and research fellow of Center of Excellence for Social Innovation and Sustainability from University Malaysia Perlis. And a very warm welcome to the participants and students from Stecom University. Is it, is it indeed a pleasure to have all of you in this memorable occasion? And I would like to thank God for gathering us here in a visiting lecture program regarding opportunity in identification in business venture management. Before we begin, please allow me to read our agenda this afternoon. First session class will be delivered by our guest lecturer, Dr. Dayang Hasliza. And finally, there will be a question and answer session after the presentation and continue with a brief photo session at the end. And we will start for this event today. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind all of the participants to turn off the microphone during the session. We will start for this session class today with the Honorable Dr. Dayang Haslisa. Yeah, for Dr. Dayang, for Dr. Dayang, the time is yours. Thank you. Assalamualaikum and uh, good afternoon. Okay. Uh, the, I think Miss Anggi is is it Anggi, your name? Okay. Uh, and thank you for inviting me for having this session. Okay. I'm Dayang Hasliza binti Muhammad Yusuf. Okay. Uh, I'm a senior lecturer like Anggi said just now. I'm also a fellow researcher uh, at the Center of Excellence uh, for Social Innovation and Sustainability. Okay. Uh, my topic today, I slightly changed the topic to uh, idea generation and uh, and opportunity identification. Okay, so my my background is uh, in banking and also in entrepreneurship. So the the topic will be around entrepreneurship for today. Okay, let me share my screen so that we can start. Okay, so idea generation and opportunity identification. So my uh, my lecture today will be divided into four subtopics, which are differences uh, between business ideas and business opportunities. And then I will continue with uh, sharing some approaches in identif identifying business opportunities. Then we look into entrepreneurial characteristics for recognizing uh, business opportunities. And lastly, we go to idea generation techniques. Okay. So the first one is uh, business ideas and opportunities. Okay, what are those? Okay, let us look. Okay. Um, why is it so important okay, about ident uh, opportunity identification okay, in entrepreneurship? Okay, the research, the study about opportunity identification is so important. It's important because um, uh, researchers found out that the difference, the main difference between entrepreneurs, okay, those people who uh, started uh, start up new businesses, and non-entrepreneurs lies in their ability to spot, to identify, to assess uh, business opportunities. Okay. Uh, it said that uh, in chaos, in times of uh, crisis, okay, in times of uh, where there are a lot of problems, okay, uh, non-entrepreneurial people will see there will be a lot of problems, there are a lot of uh, challenges, uh, it will be difficult. But entrepreneurs will see uh, that there are actually more business opportunities. Because why? Because entrepreneurs, uh, entrepreneurship is about... Uh, solving people's problem. So when there are a lot of problems, of course, there are a lot of uh, opportunity for solution. Okay, so uh, I hope we know already that um, 
new businesses, uh, entrepreneurship brings uh, solutions okay, to people, to society. Okay? And people buy things, buy new things. Why people buy new handphones or new whatever gadgets? Why people embark on uh, adopt any technology? Is because they solve our problem. It's not like because uh, we like the seller. It's not because uh, the advertising is effective, but because it solves our problem. It fulfills our needs. Okay. So in terms of, in times of uh, problems, in times of uh, crisis, there are a lot of problems. So entrepreneurs will see it as uh, opportunities, okay? potential opportunities to be pursued. Okay. Uh, so that's why we want to look at uh, Opportunities and opportunities, it comes from ideas. It comes from ideas. When you have, uh, we can have a lot of ideas. You can have a lot of ideas, but not all are opportunities. Okay. So let us look at uh, what is an opportunity. Opportunity. Uh, I've listed four uh, definitions of opportunity. Business opportunity. The first one is uh, just general opportunity. It's taken from Cambridge Dictionary. It says that an opportunity is an occasion or situation that makes it possible to do something, okay? Uh, something uh, that uh, all you have to do, okay? You want to do or you have to do or the poss possibility of doing something that is an opportunity, okay? An occasion or situation that makes it possible to do something that you want to do or you have to do, okay? That is Cambridge uh, Dictionary given by Cambridge, okay? Uh, so it's general, not really uh, about business opportunity. Then let's look at uh, definitions given by scholars in entrepreneurship, okay? For example, the second bullet is uh, opportunity or a business opportunity is a favorable set of circumstances that creates a need for a new product, service, or business. Okay, so it's a favorable. Okay, it has to be favorable. A set of circumstances. So it's not only one thing, but rather a set of circumstances. Okay, sets of uh, events, sets of uh, things. Okay, work together to create new product. Uh, or business service or business yeah the third bullet says that a business opportunity is a possibility for an entrepreneur to successfully fill a large unsatisfied need that results in enough sales and profit so we know that an opportunity okay just now it creates need for new product and services okay or business and then this has to be uh, fulfilling large unsatisfied uh, needs. Okay, that's why I remember we see just now uh, people buy because it solves their problem, feels their, fulfills their need. So this one, an opportunity, okay, fulfill uh, possibility to fulfill needs and also results uh, in enough sales and profit. If let's say uh, there's, uh, there's something which is going to fulfill people's need, need or solve people's problem. However, it won't lead to enough sales and profit. Maybe because uh, people who are affected, the number is so small, too small. Okay, So we don't really uh, consider that as business opportunity. So it has to fulfill, by the definition, it has to fulfill certain criteria. And the last bullet says that Bias, Dove, and Nelson says that a business opportunity is a favorable juncture of circumstances. Okay, it's a combination in one time okay, at one point of circumstances with a good chance for success or progress. So it has to have a value, monetary value. Okay, it has to have chance for success, and it fulfills people's need. Okay, and Okay, that's it. So it's certain that is an opportunity, business opportunity. It is favorable circumstances uh, for new businesses, for new products and services, which fulfill people's need. Okay, and it has to have enough monetary value. So that is 
business opportunity. Okay, so entrepreneurs they are able to spot this. Okay, they are able to spot this. So, however, what is a business idea? I see just now that opportunity uh, begins with ideas. Okay. So what is a business idea? Is it the same? Is it the same business idea and business opportunity? Are all our ideas, uh, can all our ideas be turned into business opportunity? Okay. So it's not. Okay. An idea is a suggestion or plan or is a notion, uh, is a thought, okay, which is in your mind, is still in your mind. Okay. It's a concept that has the potential. It has the potential. Okay, to make money, okay, and it has to be tied around a product, but it doesn't have any commercial value yet because the idea has not been tested. If you test it, then it can be developed, then it becomes an opportunity. But before that, it's just an idea. Okay, so usually a, an, a business idea is uh, an abstract, it's just some form of, uh, yeah, it's an idea, form of image, form of concept in the mind of the innovator or entrepreneur, okay? So, in order for us to have opportunity to, to identify opportunity, we have to have ideas, but not, not all ideas are opportunities, but we have to have more ideas so that we can have uh, opportunities, okay? So, an idea versus an opportunity, okay? A business opportunity is an idea that has the potential to become a viable enterprise in one or more market. Yeah. So it has the idea has the potential to become viable enterprise, yeah, a new viable new business okay, in one or more markets. Okay. So an idea uh, which um uh can be a potential opportunity, okay. Uh, depending on whether you have the capability okay, in terms of the required skills and knowledge in order to execute it, uh, then you have to manage the risks and contingencies in okay, new ideas. The more unknown it is, the higher the risk, right? Because you, you cannot predict. So there's a lot of risk. So an idea can become opportunity if you can manage the risk. Okay, you know, uh, you can assess the risk and you can manage it. Uh, and also, an idea can also become a business opportunity if it has financial viability. Remember just now, it has to have enough sales to generate profit. It has to be enough. Uh, the market is big enough. Okay. And uh, the market for your new idea. Okay? It has to be enough. So you have to assess what is the size of the market. Okay? My professor used to say an entrepreneur has to be able to seize, to size and seize, meaning not only identify, okay, not only spot an opportunity, but also to assess how big it is, how lucrative is it, is it too small? Is it uh, is it uh, too costly? For example, okay, and seize and grab the opportunity, okay. So, in terms of uh, the quality of the opportunity, uh, it has to be attractive. Okay, it has to be attractive to the investor, to the entrepreneur. Okay? It must be something for an entrepreneur to pursue to. Uh, to embark on the opportunity, it has to be attractive. For example, you have a good business idea, you have, uh, and it can become an opportunity. However, you are not interested. No entrepreneur is interested. It, not, it cannot become an opportunity. Okay? It is timely. Okay? Timely in terms of uh, the technology is there to support it. Uh, the need is there. Okay, the circumstances is ready, for example, it's durable, durable. Um, uh, it can be implemented, okay? Uh, the next topic is about opportunity identification approaches. So we have looked at ideas, we have looked at opportunity, we have sort of defined what is opportunity, 
uh, how it differs from uh, ideas, how an idea can become opportunity. Okay, then we look at uh, what are the approaches. This is based on uh, studies, based on studies, how they study, people studied uh, successful entrepreneurs all over the world and they come out and see how is it that they are able to spot, to identify opportunities. Okay? So it says that uh, opportunity identification okay, can be done, okay, can be approached in three ways. Okay, number one is a uh, true observation of trends. Uh, see how are the environment doing? Okay, how are the market forces? How are the market doing? Is it uh, going up? Is it going down? Is the economy, for example, okay, trends, environmental trends, uh, whatever in the business environment, okay, social, financial, okay. Uh, next is by solving a problem. Okay, so entrepreneurship is about solving a problem. It's about uh, fulfilling needs. It's about uh, fulfilling requirements, people requirements, market requirements. So if you are able to identify problems, then you can start a new business. There's a business opportunity in fulfilling those requirements. Okay, and also the third one is by finding gaps in the marketplace. Okay. What are the things supposed to be, but what are things uh, happening now? The gap between the two needs uh, to be bridged. So the bridge can be a new business opportunity. So these are the uh, general, uh, general opportunity identification approaches that people have done, that people have taken, entrepreneurs have taken. Okay? So we learn this from successful entrepreneurs. How do they make decisions? How do they, they come up with the idea that it's a good business? Okay. So let us look at uh, observing trends. Okay. So trends, okay, trends, the movement, how people are behaving, uh, behaving, for example, changes in the market. Okay. So trends create uh, opportunities for entrepreneurs to pursue. Okay. So it says that changes in the environment, okay, in the business environment, in your surrounding, okay, may lead to new trends. For example, economic forces. Okay, if you know that, uh, for example, the economy of the country or the world economy or is going to, uh, to a boom or you are going into recession or what, so you know, uh, you should be able to sort of, sort of come up with idea. What are the problems that may surface? Okay, for example, if we are going into recession, okay, there's not uh, enough money going around. Okay, so you shouldn't, not really. You shouldn't come up. Okay, is uh, if let's say you have an idea about uh, introducing uh, luxury products, uh, for example, luxury holidays, for example, maybe, maybe it's not suitable for that time, okay, uh, it's not timely, but if the economy is growing, uh, more and more people are earning a lot of money, then maybe that idea may become a business opportunity, okay, social forces, okay, uh, examples would be, um, what are the, the the trends like in social uh, in the population for example we know that uh, baby boomers those those uh, generation okay, who were born uh, who are now in their maybe 60s okay in their 60s those uh, category of people those group of people used to form the largest uh, segment in the world population okay so now they are going into uh, age of 60s. They are moving into that. So there are a lot of them, uh, baby boomers in the market, in the world. Okay. So we know uh, in their 60s, they are no, no longer working. Some may be doing business, but they are not actively employed. Okay. They are into if... Uh, they, are, they, are, they, don't, uh, they don't have small children, so they have more free time, they have uh, a lot of experience, 
which they they want to still contribute, though not as an uh, employed person. Uh, they have a lot of money, okay, because they have worked uh, for so long, okay, they have more money. Um, they may want to, uh, for leisure, for social, they have certain uh, certain needs, for example, for traveling, so understanding. So these kind of people, there are a lot in the market. So what do they need? Their, their health may not become, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not at the peak. In their 60s, remember, they're in their 60s. So you should predict, you can predict uh, they need uh, more medical attention. They need, um, they need, uh, not really, they're not like bedridden or what, but they need, for example, uh, health product. If you're interested in health product, so you may target this group of people, okay? Next is uh, technological advances. You also, uh, we can also look at trends of technological advances. Okay, look at uh, what are the trends of uh, technology being implemented. Okay, for example, now people are working from home. Okay, so uh, uh, the technology has enabled uh, remote working, has enabled remote learning. Okay. So there are availability, okay, which uh, there are a lot of things which can be done remotely, okay, even remote traveling, for example. Uh, and also lastly, the political trends can also come from political and regulatory changes, for example, during, uh, during the, it's a bit uh, old example, the 9-11, uh, okay. After that, uh, a lot of uh, countries are uh, having these uh, legu legu regulations about uh, terrorism and all that. So a uh, lot of uh, regulations are being uh, imposed. So the trends, um, there's changes in the market, in the business, how to do business and all. So it, it becomes a trend. Okay. Okay. These are among the trends in the market, okay. business trends, creating businesses. For example, e-commerce has been on the rise and uh, e-commerce has been around even before the pandemic. But during the pandem pandemic, it's, sh uh, it's shoot up, it's skyrocketed. And even after the movement control order, uh, even after the pandemic, I don't know. Are we still in the pandemic or what? Endemic or pandemic? Are we out of it yet? Okay. Uh, especially mobile e-commerce. The trend is there. So uh, there must be, there can be a lot of uh, business opportunity, for example, in the mobile e-commerce. People are moving towards that. There are a lot more things can be introduced. Okay. When people, uh, there are a lot of mobile e-commerce being introduced. There are a lot of potential people wanting to use it. And at the other end, there are a lot of uh, people who have problem using it. So how do we, how do we help? Okay, how do we, do we solve it? And then also about social media marketing. Social media marketing, there's been a lot of investment there. Okay, so there's a lot of potential there. Okay, people have been, uh, there's a lot of uh, business for influencers, okay, micro, uh, micro businesses okay, for local, they use a, uh, a lot of uh, situation. Okay? And big data analytics okay, is also on the rise. Okay? So if you, are, if, if you know, this is about uh, technology, big data analytics. If you are familiar with Netflix, a lot of people are uh, familiar with Netflix, you know that when you choose a movie, you watch a movie, Next, uh, Netflix will, will promote, will tell you what are, are the movies that you may be interested. Okay? If you look at other people's, uh, people maybe if you look at your parents or your youngest uh, or somebody who have different profile than you, you may look that Netflix has uh, suggested different kind of genre, different genre of films for different people. Okay, because they have this analysis, 
of your profile, of your taste and everything in order for them to come up with um, good suggestion films. Okay, Netflix have used big data a lot. Okay, so you can also, so new businesses uh, can also use uh, information. Okay, that's the, that's the trend, big data analytics. Okay. And uh, just now we, we see about changes in the social uh, social trend, for example. Entrepreneurship is on the rise, okay? especially among very young generations. Okay? People as young as uh, six year old are able to start up new business. Okay? Teenagers uh, during the pandemic, they have a lot of time they are familiar with uh, the technology, the online thing, and they come up with ideas which they are able to uh, create, uh, are able to lead, uh, to establish as business opportunity, and they create their own business. Okay, so entrepreneurship is on the rise, especially among very young generation. We're not talking about 20s, we're talking about very young teenagers, okay? 20 is too young, but this is even younger. Okay? And remote working and freelancing. Okay? You don't have to really uh, clock in to your physical office nowadays. Uh, almost like uh, from, from surveys, it shows that about 40, more than 40% people are working remotely. In certain, uh, so that is the trend okay? where people are not really uh, working at the office People are no, no longer looking, uh, working like before the pandemic. Okay, things have changed. Okay? And just now I said about baby boomers being the largest segment in the population. Now it seems that it has changed. Okay? Now millennials are the largest generation. So the millennials now, they are like in their teens. They are in their teens. Am I right? I think they're in their teens, okay? Or maybe in their early 20s, okay, millennials, okay? And uh, later they're going to work. They're going to go into, maybe now they're studying. Later they're going to enter into um, working life phase, okay? So uh, when they are the biggest uh, biggest uh, segment in the, in the population, okay? Businesses can focus, should focus on their needs, okay, on what they want, their taste, their preference, okay, in terms of food, in terms of lifestyle, in terms of working, in terms of, of whatever, how they bring up their children later, okay. So, uh, those are opportunities because before this business, I focus on uh, baby boomers, I focus on Gen X, on uh, Gen Ys, okay, Gen Z, but now millennials are the biggest segment they are the biggest population segment okay so they'll be they'll be uh, giving business opportunities their needs will be different from the gen generation z's their needs will be different from baby boomers from gen x okay people so uh, when there's changes there will be problem for people adapting to it business uh, trying to solve uh, trying to fulfill their needs okay so we have new opportunities yeah. so this is what uh, I see I mentioned just now changes in the economic forces um, so economic trends can help determine areas yeah, that are good for new startups or that uh, startups need to avoid so you should learn about uh, you can learn this from meaning uh, from looking at economic data yeah if for example, just now, if the market is growing, then you can go into more uh, luxurious kind of thing of businesses. But if the market, if the economy is uh, is doing not so well, then uh, go for we should go for where people can save money. For example, basic more basic necessities. Okay, so it says that a weak economy favors startups and help consumers save money. Okay, for example. Uh, guest buddy the company uh, help uh, with um, uh, what do you call carpooling kind of thing. Yeah. So social trends. Okay. Um, 
example, if uh, the trend, if the business, for if the population have matured, for example, later you are going to have uh, uh, the gen, the sorry, the baby boomers are all in their sixties. Okay, uh, the number, the uh, segment of population is uh, shrinking. Okay, you shouldn't be focusing on them not so much on them, but you should focus on uh, the newer generation and the, just not like I said, the, the, the millennials are going to grow. They are going to dominate the market. Okay, um, Growth in the use of mobile devices. And usually these trends, they are not working alone. Okay, You have to look at it in, uh, in combination. Okay. In technology and millennials. So digital, the digitization, all those uh, internet of things, those are familiar people, uh, the younger people, they are very familiar with this. So it goes together, okay? And younger uh, entrepreneurs, how they look at the millennials, how do they view later, we are going to study, uh, how do they view um, their lifestyle, what kind of thing that they need, okay? This is about... Um, uh, changes in technological advances, okay, things which you can, uh, uh, for example, capitalize in order to generate, to get ideas, to get new opportunities, okay. Uh, these are political action and regulatory changes, for example, maybe uh, uh, due to the pandemic, some uh, countries are imposing more um, more rules, okay? you have to have certain kind of vaccination, certain kind of, or maybe uh, you come up with uh, uh, material, you come up with new style, new way of uh, traveling, of, uh, of uh, having leisure, of, uh, of, of uh, for example, holiday, which is safe for, uh, which is safe for, to, to stop from the any kind of virus uh, spreading, okay? Uh, just now it was about trend and also the next uh, approaches is about uh, opportunity identification by solving a problem, okay? Sometimes identifying uh, opportunities is simply done by uh, involving, noticing, uh, problems and finding a way to solve it. Okay? This problem can be pinpointed through observing trends and through simple means such as uh, sometimes it's through intuition, sometimes it's through uh, discovery or serendipity, or sometimes it's by chance. Okay, So uh, many companies okay, have been started up by people who have experienced problems in their own lives and they realize that the solution to the problem is a business opportunity, okay? For example, uh, some people face the problem of uh, allergy to certain food, okay? There are people who are allergic to uh, to wheat, for example, wheat uh, product, okay? There are a lot of wheat product, okay? We consume a lot of uh, biscuits, uh, cakes, uh, pastry, which are wheat-based, okay? So people who are, having this kind of allergy, it's hard for them to get uh, food okay, on a uh, ready in, in shops or what. So sometimes people, uh, in order to solve their own problem, okay, they discover that not only them that are having that kind of uh, uh, food allergy problem, but there are many people in the society. Okay? So uh, they come up with a solution which can be commercialize okay which are other people having the same problem can uh, make use to okay or for example uh, your for example uh, some lecturers are having a uh, loss of problem uh, when we have to do uh, online classes okay when we first have to use do online classes okay so some um, there are uh, there are creative and more entrepreneurial teachers who are able to come up with how to solve this problem. Okay, actually, it started for their own use, and later they are able to uh, 
uh, help other people, other teachers too. Okay, and if they do it uh, with a fee, then it becomes a business opportunity. Okay, some people mix classes. How to do? Uh, how to do games? Okay, uh, in order to make your class more uh, more in interesting. Okay, how to do? For example, how to make your materials more interesting? Okay, so they, they make classes. Okay, they offer courses. Okay. Um, next is uh, opportunity also can be identified by finding gaps in the marketplace. Okay. Um, for example, product gaps. Okay. Uh, uh, there are a lot of. Uh, there are a lot of uh, fast food, for example. Uh, we have burgers, a lot of uh, burgers uh, available, tasty, tasty burgers. But not everyone can consume beef, for example. Okay? So these people, they have to make do without uh, having burgers because they cannot take beef. Yeah? But uh, those uh, there are people who can produce okay beef like taste okay uh, but using plants for example mushrooms or using uh, tofu okay other materials okay so this is about finding gaps okay uh, we have people who wants to consume this kind of food on the other hand there's no not enough there are some people who are able to do so okay so fulfilling this kind of problem Okay, so you are able also to generate business opportunity by finding gaps. What are uh, what are things which have not been fulfilled for certain market? Okay. Okay. Next, uh, we look at uh, what are the what are the characteristics, okay, entrepreneurial personal characteristics that uh, that makes them able to spot opportunity of course this uh, characteristic is something which you really cannot uh, see from the outside it's not physical characteristic but it's more that uh, how you behave so people have studied uh, successful entrepreneurs okay, and uh, detail out study them how do they behave what are the characteristics okay so uh, among the top ones are uh, having prior uh, or based on your background, on your based on your industry background, okay, uh, and also based on cognitive factors, how you think, how the entrepreneurs think, okay, and social networks, how big uh, uh, the entrepreneurs network of of friends, of acquaintance, okay, of uh, family members, relatives, for example. And creativity, okay. The creativity of uh, the entrepreneur, okay. Uh, prior industry experience. Uh, before this, we have learned that uh, we know that uh, in order for you, before you can uh, start up a new business, you have to have experience so that you can learn. Okay. Uh, studies have shown that if you work in an industry you can be able to spot new business opportunity based on your understanding of that, you know, that industry. You see where are the pro problems not being solved by existing businesses so you can set up your own company to solve that problem. But sometimes, uh, if you work too long in that industry, it can also make you accept things and you cannot see any, any other solution. Is how people have been doing it, process A next to process B, C, and D. You don't know how else to do it. You don't know how else to do uh, to change things. So sometimes, if you don't have experience in that industry, you can also come up with new uh, opportunity if you apply your experience from other industry. That can also happen. Okay. Uh, or you based on your network. Okay. Uh, for example, it's given that uh, Elon Musk, okay, uh, I'm sure we all know who he is, okay, the founder of Tesla, 
of SpaceX when he uh, started Tesla he doesn't really have uh, experience in the automotive industry okay um, cognitive factors okay studies have shown that opportunity recognition may be something which is uh, innate or cognitive process okay um people say that uh, entrepreneurs they have six sense okay that allows them to see opportunities when others see only problems they see how to solve other people are just experiencing but entrepreneurs see how it can be solved okay is actually an alertness okay alertness of your surrounding okay noticing uh, when people are having problem what are the as a, what is the problem actually and thinking of coming up with idea how it can be solved okay applying for example the situation at different places uh, applying technology which has been applied at other place, places to uh, the situation okay be innovative that is alertness which people have said that they have some kind of sixth sense is actually alertness of the surrounding okay being creative okay looking at the perspective looking at the problem from a, a, a different perspective not uh, thinking like the mainstream people does if we think to uh, alike together then we are going to come up with same solution which is not new so you, uh, entrepreneurs who think differently they will come up with different solution okay and then this is uh, also an interesting uh, part which is about social network or sometimes it's called ties okay ties social network or ties okay so social network is actually the extent how big it is and the depth okay how deep it is of an individual social network this is not business not really business network but rather is social network okay the larger your social network the larger is your exposure and also more uh, to more uh, ideas and opportunities. Okay? Uh, from research, from survey, it's found that 40 to 50% of people who start a new business got their idea from social contact. Okay? And these ties, this uh, social network uh, can be categorized into two, which is a strong tie relationship and weak tie. Strong tie means uh, there's a lot of interaction, you meet with them often, you communicate with these people often, uh, for example, with your co-workers who you see every day, with your close friends, with your family members, spouse, these are strong ties, okay? Weak tie relationships, uh, those are like uh, acquaintances, okay, casual, those who know casually, you don't really see them very often, okay? Uh, strong tie, those are your close friend. You understand them, uh, they understand you. You have um, very, a lot of common things with them. You are alike, okay? That's why uh, usually uh, you don't really get a business idea from strong ties, meaning you don't get from your close friends, okay? Your, your close uh, family. But with tie, because you don't really see them very often, uh, they are not. They don't really have uh, similarities with you. So they think differently. They have different background. Background. Maybe they work in different industry. Maybe they come from uh, different people. Not even the same uh, location, physical location with you. Maybe somewhere else from uh, other country all over the uh, world. Okay. Uh, because of the differences, whatever they say may spark. A business opportunity, an idea for you. Okay, uh, we are talking about thinking out of the box. Uh, we are talking about uh, out of the norm. We are talking about uh, something which is uh, not ordinary. So, if you are talking about to the same people, same uh, circle of friends, then we are going to get the same ideas. We already know each other, so we are discussing uh, similar things. Uh, so less likely to get a new business idea but if you are talking to uh, different groups of uh, people with uh, uh, not so similar to us okay so there are things which can pop up okay which can trigger business opportunity so weak ties 
have more likelihood for you to get uh, exposures and also business opportunities, ideas and opportunities. Okay. Uh, this is what I explained just now. Okay. So, so the opportunity recognition process, uh, if we uh, combine the trends just now and the characteristics of the entrepreneur, okay, when uh, it overlaps, okay, this is where uh, based on maybe your maybe your experience, your your creativity, uh, your networks, and by looking at the trends, you can come up with uh, idea and also opportunity uh, for new business. Okay. This is based from uh, a paper, okay, sources of new business idea between men and women. Okay. So men happen to have uh, to get business idea almost 50% from their prior jobs. Okay. Uh, the other half is about from other sources, from education by attending education courses, okay, by discovery chance happening by someone suggested and also uh, maybe about how how do i see it's about how many percent it's about one third is it one third not really one third more than one third okay a quarter maybe uh, about 12 percent okay it's out of hobby or interest however women okay uh, the job contribute 30 percent uh, about i think about one third okay uh, ideas come from their previous job. Okay, others it come from others, from education, education and chances happening will be uh, more or less the same with the guys. Okay. Uh, someone suggested and also hobby and interest. Okay. So women can get business ideas from prior job as well as based on hobbies and interests. Okay, so whatever whatever hobbies that you have, whatever uh, interest, creative interest, or whatever interest that you have. Okay, maybe you can turn that into business opportunity. Okay. So when we talk about uh, opportunity, we can also uh, maybe discuss uh, uh, types of opportunity. We can categorize uh, opportunities into is uh, demand pool or technology push. Okay, demand pool will be uh, it is based on problems, uh, based on what the market needs. Okay, there's problem in the market, so the opportunity uh, discover there's uh, ob through observation, okay, through study, discover problems in the market and come up with solution. The other one is starting with technology. Okay, that's why you need to be alert of new technologies, trends bring about by technology. Okay, um, for example, uh, Jack Ma. Yeah, Jack Ma of Al, uh, who's famous for Alibaba, yeah, uh, who started uh, among the largest e-commerce uh, business in the world. Okay, he started uh, with uh, when he went to the US. I guess he 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 discovered he heard about or he got to know about the internet in in China at that time. Okay. People have not really used it. And when he searched, he cannot really find a lot about China in the internet. Okay. So then he discovered that he, he came up with the idea that you can do a lot okay, with the internet function. So he started the Alibaba and a lot more uh, e-commerce uh, based uh, businesses. Okay. So he discovered the technology first, what it can do, and he foresee, predict, Okay, how it can help, uh, how uh, the technology can help uh, the world business. Okay, rather than uh, rather than looking at problem and trying to solve it. So that's the difference between uh, demand pool uh, and technology push or technology driven okay, opportunity. So uh, then. Uh, in order for us to have more business opportunity, we have a lot of ideas. So, uh, uh, idea generation techniques. Okay, this idea 
in order for you to have a lot of idea, you have to be creative. Yeah. Over here, students, when I first, uh, usually when I ask students, are you creative? Okay. When I ask them to, uh, to create something, they will see that uh, I'm not creative. Okay. What they define as creativity is artistic. When I ask them to draw something, they say I'm not artistic. It's not creativity. It's not about artistic. Artistic is a sort of uh, a type of creativity. Creative being creative is having the ability to use your imagination to develop new, unique, original solutions. It based on it comes from the word create. Create is uh, it must be something from uh, from there's none and you create something new. Okay, it's, you're not talking about uh, artistic, not talking about uh, music or uh, painting or drawing. Okay, can be about sketching, it's sketching your ideas. Okay, so over here with my students, usually we have uh, creative to show that they are creative. Okay, what I do is uh, sometimes I give them um, uh, incomplete drawing a piece of paper with uh, some scribbles on it and ask them to complete it based on whatever they want. So when we uh, when we collect back and see that, nobody will draw the same thing, will complete the picture in the same thing to show that people are unique and people can come up with uh, ideas. Okay? So idea generation, you need to be creative. You need to even be creative in order for you to detect a problem. Okay, if you are not creative, then whatever it is, it is. Okay, but people are born creative. People are born creative. Believe in your ability to imagine. Okay, you can imagine. There's no limit to your imagination. Okay, so you can create, you can be creative. And your idea, okay, can be, okay, some of it can be turned into business opportunity. Okay. So creativity is about uh, looking at things in new, okay, uh, unusual ways, uncommon ways, and come what come up with solutions that no one has previously thought of, okay, coming with something new. So it can be uh, used for many uh, purpose. Okay, so there are a lot of uh, idea generation, uh, idea generating. Techniques, okay, brainstorming, focus group, uh, from research. Okay, so remember, by being creative, you generate a lot of ideas. Then you can choose. Okay, you can refine those ideas to become opportunities. Okay, so I'm sharing with you. Uh, this is the model of innovation engine, uh, a creativity model by Professor Tina Silik. Uh, uh, okay. So he say, she says that uh, okay, she says that in order for you to be creative, you can uh, uh, these are factors are important. Okay, culture. If you are exposed to creative culture, a lot of ideas, a lot of diversi uh, diversi uh, diversified uh, things in your culture. If you are exposed to many people, many kind of culture. Okay. Uh, imagination, this will help you imagine because you have a lot of experience, okay? knowledge. You're exposed to a lot of things. Okay? So you have many knowledge. You travel a lot. Okay? And you have the attitude okay? uh, and resources to be creative. Okay? So these things can be enhanced through, uh, through those activities, class activities. Okay? which uh, we try to implement uh, with students. Okay, these are, if you search for brainstorming, you can find uh, lots of uh, brainstorming uh, techniques. Okay. So sources of new business ideas can also come from consumers. Okay, maybe that's why uh, we have people, uh, we have a lot of surveys, market surveys, uh, people asking about your feedback again. Okay? Uh, from the internet, even people uh, asking you to test or to taste certain product and give you some feedback. Okay? You can also come from uh, observing, looking at the existing product and services to see whether it still meets whatever the new uh, requirements are, whatever the new situations are. Okay? 
we can also get new ideas, uh, business ideas by uh, surveying, by asking this, uh, looking at distribution channels, and of course, government policies and through research. I think uh, that's all. We have reached the end of the uh, slides. And also, okay, so there's a road there. I'm going back already. I'm handing over the session to Miss Angi. Thank you so much for Dr. Dayang. For everyone, if you wanna ask question, you can raise in a, your hand or you. I'm sorry. You can raise your hand or you can write in room chat. Okay. First of all, I will read a question from audience in a YouTube. First question. This is for Mr. Solihan. If we have a new business innovation. But we don't have capital, though we have to raise capital first or apply for a loan before our innovation is uh, preceded by someone, Miss? Uh, thank you. Uh, I forgot the <laughs> name of the person who asked the question. Okay. Uh, if you have idea, okay, if you have idea for innovation, uh, in in depending on the 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 situation uh, at your place okay uh, there are there are people who may want to, who are interested to finance ideas okay depending on the the ecosystem the financial ecosystem uh, at your place but usually we have people uh, who are interested to finance okay even now we have uh, the more recent one uh, crowdfunding if you have good idea okay you can uh, tell about your idea what you want to achieve how what problem can it solve okay you can get people who are interested in your idea to fund crowdfunding meaning uh, if people give a, a little bit of money not like uh, hundreds or thousands or, or whatever enough for you to pursue your idea okay but of course you have to explain it you have to uh, present it in such a way to be to make it attractive to people who are uh, who are going to listen to know about your idea okay okay I hope that answers for... the question yeah thank you for answering and then we have an uh, audience uh, raise on. this is mr Henki. Yeah, for Mr. Henke, the time is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, good afternoon uh, for Dr. Daya. I see you, Aliza. <clears throat> I, I, I'm, I'm very interesting with your uh, presentation. <clears throat> and uh, actually, I have a few questions. Let me ask you first question. You mentioning that uh, innovation is very important, <clears throat> and my first question is, what kind of uh, innovation uh, that you mean? It is uh, about the technology or <clears throat> about user friendly or something else. This is the first question, and the secondly is uh, how. <clears throat> How we develop the human capital, especially uh, human resources uh, skills, in handling the innovation. I analyze there are so many gap uh, in human resources, and <clears throat> the innovation cannot uh, absorb uh, fully uh, in the community. So it's only maybe about 60 to 80 <clears throat> percent. Maybe uh, my two questions first. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Henke. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and also thank you for uh, yeah. switching on your camera <laughs> so that I can see. Uh, the first question, uh, I don't know whether you should be answering rather than me, but you because you look uh, experienced enough, you look uh, knowledgeable enough. Okay, let's let's just uh, maybe share our minds, okay, what we think. The first one is about uh, innovation, right? Whether it's about uh, 
technology or whether making it uh, more user friendly is that is that the question yeah. which is more important okay usually of course not a requirement but technology assists innovation okay technology makes uh, innovation uh, however good innovation things which are solving a lot of people problem it doesn't have to be high tech because when you involve technology it becomes expensive right mm -hmm. so when it's mm -hmm. expensive then you are not able to implement it okay mm -hmm. so uh, small uh, innovation but which can be sustained which can help more people which can make uh, life easier i think is more important okay it's more um, uh, needed in the society okay mm. because not everyone can afford uh, high technology okay maybe we are working uh, maybe as uh, we implement the smaller lab, lower technology solutions after that uh, time by time we are going to end, we are going to reach the high tech solution but but uh, i believe um, uh, the lower technology the simpler innovation which uh, solve a lot more people's problem uh, is more um, needed in the society okay, okay. Uh, the second question uh, about developing human capital uh, for which will be suitable for for innovation right, right. so um, we say that you if you manage uh, meaning the society uh, meaning companies employers uh, have to have um, have to prepare uh, environment which are which are friendlier for uh, in order to for us to be more innovative okay yeah. uh, even in families too so we, we shouldn't really go like uh, it's how things are done don't change it we don't want things like we we, we shouldn't be uh, implementing don't reinvent the wheel it's not broken uh, we we shouldn't be uh, if it's not broken then do it, do nothing to it it shouldn't be like that right we should be encouraging uh, looking for new things okay uh, of course, when you innovate, when you try, it it, uh, it begins with with uh, trying to change, in exper experimenting. When you experiment, chances are you do a lot of mistakes before you come out to the ideal solution. So companies will be like, oh, oh we don't want you to change, simply change things because it's going to cost us. So so usually companies don't want. I don't really encourage people to be creative, their workers to be creative, to be innovative. Okay, especially big companies. Okay, however, uh, they cannot afford to do that anymore. We have to inno innovate. Okay, uh, we have large business businesses who have gone out of business because they fail to innovate. Innovate. For example, we have uh, big names like uh, last time. If we take pictures. Uh, pictures, uh, paper-based pictures is usually Kodak. Yeah, it's very popular. Okay, they are failing oh, yeah. to right. pursue digital tech, uh, photography makes them uh, uh, makes them fall from their leader position, market leader position. Oh, right. So companies need to innovate, even though it's going to cost them uh, some capital. But I guess, uh, whatever, however it is, there have to be some, uh, made, uh, some control, some some uh, way to manage it. Okay, you cannot have uh, like uh, employees coming to the, the office and uh, make changes all uh, to their heart, whatever do they want, because we have to have some. Uh, we have we have a lot of things. Like for example, uh, have to meet the ISO, have to meet all those uh, standards and regulation. But uh, there should be ways for the, the society, for the employee to be able to, uh, to voice up their ideas okay, for changes. Okay, that, that's what uh, I think. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you so much for answering, Dr. Dayang.
And then next question, this is from Mr. Setio. In the era volatile, in the era volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity that happened right now because COVID and Ukraine Russia war. What business idea that fit with this condition? Thank you. Uh, Miss, can you repeat? In the era, in the era future that happened right now because COVID and Ukraine Russia war. What business idea that fit with this condition? Interest, interesting. Oh. <laughs> it's about the, uh, Russia and Ukraine war, right? Yes. First, what first a business look, idea. Yeah. First, we look at uh, how has the war affected us? How has the war affected us? Uh, have before this um. Uh, how uh, before this or what uh, Russia and Ukraine's uh, contribution to us? Are we importing their goods? Are we using their system? Are we using their people as our workers, for example? For example, okay. When the war happens, how does it affect us? What have been terminated, for example? So we go again. What are the problems that have raised? Problems here doesn't really mean a war is a big problem. I'm not talking about the, the when problem in entrepreneurship is not about uh, the world peace. The hung, hunger is also a problem. But it's just like unmet needs, uh, unfilled, unfulfilled requirements. What are the things that have been right uh, before this is done like this? But be due to the war, uh, it cannot be done like this anymore. Okay, it has to change. Something has to change. The, the something has to change is actually an opportunity for solution. That's a problem to be solved. Okay. So uh, see how the, the thing affects us, it, how it affects the world. Okay. How has, uh, what are the rules? What are the things which have been uh, stopped, have changed due to the war? What are things before this available now become not available? Or what are the things which are, uh, can be before this is not suitable to be introduced? For example, now because of the war, war it becomes suitable to be introduced. Okay. Thank you for answering. I hope this, this is answer. Uh helping for your question and then we, the third question this is question from mr nugroho how to create a good brainstorming to get good idea where where our brainstorming member are not equal in education level between each other thank you okay so brainstorming um is a technique um the more diverse you are i think the better so that you can get a lot of feedbacks. Okay, remember again, if you have very similar background, you tend to think uh, similarly. So if you think similarly, the ideas will, will not be different. Okay, but brainstorming is about getting as many diverse ideas uh, as possible. Okay, if you have different, for example, education level, um, depending on the situation but uh, even if you have different education level you have your concern even though you are even a low educated person have their own concern and they belong to a specific segment in the market in the country in the population uh, which is significant okay um so uh, in brainstorming, there are some rules. There are rules, for example, you don't, uh, you accept all ideas. You accept all ideas. You don't reject any ideas. Okay, the rule is do not reject any ideas. You don't filter. Okay, if you uh, people throw ideas, you just collect, 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 collect. Okay, this is where uh, you apply your divergent thinking. Where you open up those ideas. Okay, so you don't you don't filter. If you start filtering, then you say, oh, that one not uh, not applicable, not applicable. Then there's no brainstorming anymore. Okay, then when you have like hundreds of ideas you put on the board, 
then you start choosing. Then only you choose, uh, then you filter. But when you brainstorm, you get as many. Get the concern, even though the person is not highly, too highly educated, but the concern may be valid, which may give you some, some, uh, some uh, insight, perspective from different category of people. Okay. Okay, thank you for us for answering. Yeah, and then my I asking, Miss. Okay, uh, I have a business idea in the service sector, and currently in this field has not many competitors in the bus. Yeah, I'm sorry, in the field has not many competitor for now, and it's something new in Indonesia. But what I see as an opportunity in the future that there will be many people who need this service do. So I have the open it now for my business idea or so that the business we are we famous before many competitors or waiting when the service sector is already booming, Miss. Okay. Uh, if you remember, uh, you have taken uh, economics. Yeah. Economics. Uh, we have this concept of uh, economic profit or abnormal profit. Okay, it's when uh, there's not many competitors. When you start into the business, you are able to have economic or um, above the normal profit. Okay, but when people, other people start joining, those followers, those who are imitators, those who imitate your business, when they start coming in, coming in then your level of profit will go down until you just get normal profit. Normal profit just manage to sustain your business. So if uh, the technology is ready, if you are ready, if uh, you identify a good segment, market segment, which you believe you can help fulfill their problem, okay, uh, you can start trying. But uh, if you're small, then nowadays the internet allows you to do micro businesses. Before that, you have to have shops, you have to have right physical presence, which uh, need a lot of investment. Nowadays, it's, it's better, right? That's why even uh, young people, uh, very young children can start new business. Okay, But don't wait until other people are doing it. <laughs> Okay, thank you for answering with Dr. Dayang. And then for last question, we have a question in Zoom chat from audience. This is from Miss Maya Utami. I have a special interest with remote working or freelance. What can kind of work? Just for example, that can be done for youngster. Thank you. What can be what can be done? Okay. For youngsters. Uh... depending on uh, things that can be done for youngsters. Uh, meaning you want youngsters to work, you want to, you want to use their, 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 you want to have them uh, working for you as freelancers or you want to do freelancing for youngsters. I have a special interest with remote working or freelancing. What kind of work? Just for example, that can be done for youngsters. Kind of work, uh, for youngsters, what do youngsters need? They need education. They need advice. They need friends. They need, so whatever that they need, uh, if you have freelance, you can uh, offer them. Why not? See, what do they need? What needs has um. not been fulfilled? If, if, if I, under, I understand your question correctly, meaning you want to service uh, youngsters. Right? They need to develop themselves, they need to be healthy, they need to be, have education, okay? they need to have a healthy self-respect. So there are a lot of things. See, so which is it that has not been uh, really fulfilled now? So that will be the gap, that will be your solution, your, your, your opportunity for them. If that's what, uh, if I understand the question correctly. Okay, thank you for answering. I guess no one else asking again. Maybe we go to the next session. Uh, time for 
Tem okay, picture, take a picture. Okay. For everyone, please turn on your camera. We will start for take a picture. Ya, untuk para peserta mungkin bisa dibantu untuk menyalakan kamera. I will say one, two, and three. One, one more again. One, two, and three. Okay, thank you. Uh, before I close this event, you will say something before for doctor. Uh, if I want to say something, if if yes, <laughs> now uh, all the best to all of us. Okay, hopefully we can develop more innovative, creative nations. Okay, uh, creative younger people. Uh, maybe hope to see you again. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for everyone and for our audience uh, for attendance this even until last session. Thank you so much for Dr. Dayang Haslisa for sharing your knowledge. I hope this knowledge is a very beneficial for our audience. Thank you so much for everyone for coming in this event. Thank you so much. I hope we can meet again with Dr. Dayang Haslisa in the future with the online or offline collaboration project. Thank you so much for teaching in Stecom University for Dr. I hope Hi. we can meet in Stecom. Yeah, why not? Yes. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. salam. Thank you so much for everyone. See you soon. Have a nice day and enjoy your day. Thank you so much for everyone. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for untuk para peserta untuk link absensi akan segera di share. Mohon ditunggu. I can leave now, right? It's okay, Miss. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. See you soon. Yeah. Untuk link absen mungkin akan segera di-share. Mohon ditunggu. Hmm. Ya, bagi para peserta yang belum absen bisa absen terlebih dahulu. Terima kasih. Terima kasih buat para peserta yang hadir pada acara hari ini. Untuk absen, link absensi akan dibuka hingga waktu 5 menit. Ya, jadi yang belum absen mau bisa absen terlebih dahulu sebelum meninggalkan acara. Terima kasih.